Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here, and obviously I am not using my normal camera, etc. setup as I'm traveling and I forgot all of my stuff uh, as I was getting out the door this morning, but hopefully I sound and uh, sound okay. So with that, let's get started because that's not why you're here. Today we're going to be talking about the right to disconnect, and the question is, is it even possible? Now, here's what's going on. If you don't know what, what this is, I'm going to break this down for you. So let's dive in, because if this passes in the state of California, it was introduced for the record by Assemblyman Matt Haney of San Francisco back in February. This is going to give employees across the state the right to disconnect from communications from their employer during non-working hours. That's essentially what we're talking about here. Now, the bill would require non-working hours to be established in a written agreement between the employer and the employee. So it would mean that essentially the employee has the right to ignore any communication from an employer that is received during those times. Now, there are exceptions to this, and I think those are important to note because those exceptions would be for things like emergencies, or for scheduling reasons. Now, the San Francisco Standard, the publication reported that collective bargained employment agreements like union contracts would supersede the right to disconnect. So if you are basically a member of a union and that is who is running your contract with your employer, essentially that uh, it has uh, power over this agreement, meaning this agreement doesn't work. It's, super, it's superseded by your labor agreement through your union. Now, the California Department of Labor will enforce this law by handing out $100 fines to employers for every incident where they contact employees outside of agreed working hours. This, for the record, has not passed or been signed into law. It just was recently referred to the Assembly Labor Committee to be heard. Now, I think this is an interesting one, and I was thinking about actually my father when I was reading about this article, which was from uh, Rob Zubron of by the way, I forgot to mention that uh, straight from the start. But this is interesting because, you know, obviously when my dad was, was you know, let's say in his 40s and 50s or so working, there was not the amount of connectivity back then that we have now, meaning he didn't have a smartphone in his pocket. He couldn't be hit up on Slack or Teams or IM or text message and all of that. When he came home, there was a house in the phone. And if he didn't pick it up, the employer simply was okay with that. Maybe he's out to dinner, you know, whatever he's doing, maybe he's not here. And so now we are living on this completely interconnected world. And I think that that is an entirely different animal when we are talking about something like a right to work, because we all, quite frankly, a right to disconnect, excuse me, we all essentially have the need to disconnect. You know, when you go home and you want to, let's say, I don't know, sit on the couch and watch a movie or go out to dinner or whatever it is, you don't want to be pestered. But here's the thing. I don't know how this is going to really work or if it's even really going to be fully possible. And here's why. So think about it from this perspective. One, the employer and the employee have to come up with an agreement, meaning there's going to be a standardization. So if your company has 100 employees and you're all going to agree that, okay, at five o'clock, nobody can be called, et cetera, et cetera. But the only way that the Department of Labor would level a fine on the employer is if an employee actually blew the whistle and said, hey, you know, my boss is, you know, calling me after hours. And then that opens up the question of what about retaliation? So the Department of Labor comes and says, you know, to your boss, okay, you just called, you know, Nick or whoever after hours, and that's a hundred dollar fine. Maybe I'm going to get fired for that. Not immediately, but maybe a month, maybe two months, whatever that is down the road. Now, how do I, as let's say an employee that doesn't think they should have been fired, how can I look at that and say, well, this was clearly retaliation, or maybe it wasn't. Maybe I really do, do suck, or at least my boss thinks I do, and I don't. So I think there's a lot of gray area here. I think we are going to see what happens with this. And if I had to predict what's going to happen, I think California will pass this because, well, that's California. And when it comes to things like GDPR protections, they've got the CCPA, unlike most states in the union. So they're, they're pretty forward thinking when it comes to these kinds of things. But right to disconnect, I don't necessarily know how this is going to work uh, and how the logistics will really play out, especially when you have the fear of employees saying, yeah, no, that's not going to fly. The other side of this, too, is you've got a lot of small businesses out there that might have, let's say, one person or one employee, or they might work really odd or weird hours. Can you really write an agreement about that? Or if you're a sole proprietor, 
you know, like if I'm the only one in my company, I can't tell all my clients, don't call me past 5 p.m., right? You know, whatever 5 p.m. is for me, because I'm going to be there 24 seven for my clients or they might move on, you know, those kinds of things. So there's a lot of loopholes in this. But overarchingly, I think the concept for right to disconnect is actually pretty good. And so we're going to see what happens here. We're going to see if we're able to disconnect. And quite frankly, I think detoxing from phones and communication, whether it's personal or business, is a good thing. Studies have shown that that those people that have disconnected from social media completely, even if it's just a week, feel a heck of a lot better. And so if your boss is one of those ones that's harassing you at night and you're just trying to I don't know, eat your dinner and watch a TV show or something, that's probably going to be relief. But we'll see what happens. We'll see if it spreads. And I guess we'll go from there. We'll find out together. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please stay private. Thanks, everybody.